right, so you've been teaching with this distance learning thing, and uh, it's time for you to assess, either formatively or summatively, whether your students are understanding. So that's a perfect opportunity for a quiz, a Moodle quiz, and this is really a powerful feature of Moodle. So I'm logged in uh, into the sandbox, I'm logged in as the teacher, and I am going to turn editing on. And then uh, let's say we're gonna go to, uh, in, the, in the learning all about animals section, we want a quiz. Now, two ways to kind of get those quiz questions into Moodle. First, you can go down here to question bank and just make all your questions first and then send them to a quiz. Or you can just add an activity, which is add a quiz, and then make your qu questions in that quiz. Either way, the questions themselves are actually going to be stored in the question bank so that you can reuse questions in other quizzes. So it's really the question bank where, where we're going to want to go. Now you can categorize your questions so you can do uh, all your questions about animals and then another category, all your all your questions about guitars. Um, so let's click on questions and we can see right now we have no questions. There's nothing going on here. Um, if I want right now, I have no categories. The default category is workshop for, or um, right here. My course category is default for sandbox. Your list here might look a little different because technically I'm an administrator, not a teacher. So uh, my screen might look a little different. But right now, uh, all my questions are going to go right here. So I'm going to click Create a Question and look at all of the different kinds of questions you can create. And most of these are automatically scored by Moodle. Once the teacher has, has taken the effort to make the questions, Moodle is going to save so much time by doing the scoring for you. Um, so the only big exception would be an essay question where, of course, the student will input the essay uh, using the online text editor and then the teacher will have to score it manually. But a lot of these, most of these other things are going to be automatically scored by the teacher. So let's take a look at the classic multiple choice. So I'm going to click on multiple choice, click add. It's going to go into the default category um, for my sandbox class. And let's say um, uh, identify this animal. Okay, so you're going to want to, and I'm going to even put llama. <laughs> All right. And then um, the students will never see the questions. So uh, when you start to get hundreds and hundreds of questions in your question bank, you're going to want this question name to be useful so that it's easy for you to identify the question without having to open it up and look at it. You'll be able to recognize it by the name alone. So this question text is what the students are going to see. So I'll say, uh, what type of animal is this? And then what's really neat is my question can be just plain old text, but I can also drag in images. I can drag in uh, videos. I, man, I could do just about anything I want in, in these um, questions. So it's just really a really powerful uh, tool here. And so then down here, I can do some general feedback regardless of the student's answer. But then down here, my multiple choice can have either one answer or multiple answers. I'm going to have one. I'm going to, what do I want my choices to look like? ABC with capitals or lowercase or one, two, three. I'm going to do lowercase. I can do shuffle the choices, the A, B, and C. Um, are going to be choice are going to be shuffled, and let's say it's a llama, and now uh, I can make. By the way, this is just so cool. I can make my choices be images if I wanted to. So I have a full-on text editor right here, which I can drag and make it a little bigger, and so my answers as the multiple choice can be quite elaborate as well. But right now, I'm just going to kind of keep it simple and just say it's a llama and that's a hundred percent my feedback will be correct all right i don't have to put in feedback 
I do, however, need to give it a score, and because llama is correct, it's 100%. I could put cat, and that would be 0%. Where's 0%? Uh, oh, none. There it is. Uh, I was looking for the number 0%, but it's none. None means it's no correct, uh, no points. And then let's put in dog and leave that as none. And let's do chicken. And I can add additional blanks if I want. Um, I can do some other um, settings, but for right now, let's just save the changes. And look at this, I now have one question in my question bank. It says so up here and I can actually see it. If I want to just kind of preview it, I can click on the magnifying glass and it opens it up in a pop-up window right here. It tells me this, so this is how you can see what it feels like from a student point of view. And I can see that the settings, the, the choices were shuffled because chicken was one of the last ones I put in. Now I can test it out. I can click cat and see what happens. I can submit. Oh, it's wrong. And it tells me that the correct answer is llama. Now I can start again and I can say llama and let's see what happens. I'm going to submit and finish. And it says, and there's the feedback, the custom feedback that I had put in. Correct. Way to go. All right. Um, so I'm going to close this preview. So I'm gonna click create another question. Oh, let's do another multiple choice. No, let's, let's twi uh, mi mix it up. Let's do true or false. I'll do true, uh, uh, TF. So I like to do that to indicate that it's a true false. This animal is an alpaca. All right. Uh, uh, Claire thinks this animal is an alpaca is her statement true or false let's say i don't know this is kind of a weird one i should have thought that one through a little bit better and then i will bring in an image of a llama and i'll put a llama and of course Students are going to see this, so it's not like I'm giving anything away. I'm going to click Save, and then uh, I'm going to say the correct answer is false. And I'll say, uh, way to go. A lot of people aren't able to tell the difference between the two animals. All right. And, oh, no, that's the feedback for if the person puts true. So I'm going to paste that down here. And I'm going to say, nope. They are similar looking, but this is an, uh, is a llama. All right, so you don't have to give feedback. I mean, it's just a way to customize your, uh, oops, I accidentally clicked save and continue editing. editing. I'm gonna do save changes. So now you can see that I have two questions and my most recent question that I've inputted is highlighted right here, green. But I now have two questions in my sandbox and I could just continue editing and putting in as many questions as I want. So I'm gonna make a bunch of questions and then we're gonna return to this video, hang on. All right, so I have been adding questions and I'm gonna click on the question bank. And you can see now I have a bunch of different questions, this ASL. What's kind of neat is uh, you, can, you can insert video and, and into your questions. I'm gonna drag that over here in case you need to see it. Uh, yeah, I put in, I just, I'm just kind of creating a bunch of different kinds of questions. Here, click on the magnifying glass and here's a preview and you can include, um, do spelling tests on Moodle for, for the, uh, it's really kind of cool. You just click, check this out. Llama. Llama. So there you go, it's a spelling test. Now the kid enters in the words, uh, spells the word, and gets the answer right or not, right? Okay, so we've got a bunch of questions, and now it's time for us to, um, 
in our question bank. Now it's time for us to actually create the quiz. Okay, so let's say I'm definitely going to put it in my section about animals. I'm going to turn editing on and I'm going to add a quiz right here. Tons of features for a quiz. Uh, let's just do quiz about animals uh, right here. I can describe the quiz here, um, although generally quizzes are self-explanatory, but I can definitely put in a, a picture if I want to kind of spruce things up and kind of let let students, I don't know, have have a have fun with with this stuff. Because quizzes and stuff, that's nerve-wracking as it is. So I'm gonna kind of make things fun. And there is my introduction to the quiz. And then uh, a whole bunch of settings that we're gonna save for a later date. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna click Save and Display. And you'll notice right now, I have no questions. It says so right here, no questions have been added yet. So I'm gonna click Edit Quiz, and I need to add some questions. Now, I can either I'm gonna click on the add. I can create a brand new question right now, or I can pull questions from the question bank. It can either be a random question from the question bank, or I can um, pull specific questions from the question bank. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna click specific questions from the question bank, and right now I have four questions in my question bank. And uh, let's say I'm just gonna do this multiple choice question, and uh, let's do this video question, which is also a multiple choice, but I happen to know I put in video. And let's just do a spelling word. So I won't do that. I don't have to choose them all, so I'm gonna skip that true-false question. And I'm gonna click Add Selected Questions to the quiz. I now have a three-question quiz absolutely totally ready for my students. I'm gonna ignore all this stuff. You can change the order of these questions if you want. Um, uh, uh, you can make it where each question is its own page or you can put all the questions on a single page. I'll let you decide which one you like better, but it's that repaginate, which is how you change how many questions per page. Right now it's set for one question per page, so let's go with that, and that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna click Save, and now my quiz is good to go. So let's take a look at, I don't want that one, I want this one. Let's take a look at what this is gonna look like from a student point of view. So I'm logged in as a student, and I am going to go to Sandbox and I'm gonna click on learning all about animals and I can see as a student, I have a quiz and it has not been attempted. When I click on it, I get that introduction that the teacher gave me and then I'm gonna click attempt quiz now and this question, I can see here's my nav bar over here for the quiz. I can take a look at the quiz question. Uh, I'm gonna hit next when I'm ready. Um, in fact, let me take a quick look. There's me doing sign language, and of course that is a llama. I'm going to click next. What type of animal is this? It's a llama. And I'll click next. And you can see as I'm going, the quiz navigation is keeping track of my progress. And then llama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I can spell llama, but I'm going to just do L-A-M-A. Uh, and I'm going to, now, now that I'm done, I know I'm done because I don't have a next button, I have a finished attempt button. It's not officially submitted until I click submit all and finished. So I'm gonna submit all and finished. And now it indicates that uh, in a second, it's thinking, it's thinking, all right, look at that. I already got my score, didn't I? I got the feedback, my correct feedback that the teacher provided is right here. It's right here. Here's this customized feedback, the correct answer. Oh, here it is. Note, nope, there are two L's at the start. That's the uh, customized feedback I had given. So I, as a student, now know that I got a two out of three, and I am able to return 
to the sandbox and I now have that in my grade book. So that is a quiz. It's really, really powerful. The key thing, put your questions in your question bank first. And then when you create your quiz, pull your, qu your questions from the question bank into your quiz.